Hi boys and girls, Mrs. Lighten here again. I am going to now move on from rhyming to our second poetic device, which is called alliteration. Alliteration, if everybody can see this, is the repetition of the consonant sounds at the beginning of nearby words. The repetition of consonant sounds at the beginning of nearby words. I'm emphasizing consonant, beginning, and nearby. Because in order for your poem or a text to have alliteration, the sound that is repeated must be a consonant, it must be at the beginning of words, and they must be nearby each other in the sentence. Here is an example. My puppy makes pepperoni pizza in the park with his pals. I'm going to read it again and I want you to listen closely for the sound, the consonant sound that is being repeated throughout this sentence. My puppy makes pepperoni pizza in the park with his pals. If you said that you heard the P or the P sound being repeated, you are correct. The alliteration here is the P sound, the sound that P makes, P. My puppy makes pepperoni pizza in the park with his pals. Alliteration is a device used by authors just to make the reader have a little bit more fun and to emphasize certain words. I am gonna go ahead now and read you a little poem that I found on the internet. It did not have a title, but I'm going to share it anyways because I think that it gives, does a great job really emphasizing alliteration. If everybody can see that. Down the slippery slide they slid, sitting slightly sideways. Slipping swiftly, see them skid on holidays and Fridays. So the alliteration that we hear, the consonant sound being repeated again and again, is the letter S, the S sound. We hear it in slippery, slide, slid, sitting, slightly, sideways. So the author could have used many different words to get his point across here, but he wanted to use words that had the same sounds to create that alliteration. If you notice also, there's a rhyming pattern here. In our last lesson, we talked about A-A-B-B and A-A-B-A. In this poem, we have an A-B-A-B pattern. Since there are only four lines, our A-B-A-B. Slid in line one rhymes with skid in line three and sideways in line two rhymes with Fridays in line four. So the author of this poem incorporated a rhyming pattern as well as alliteration. I am going to now read one of my favorite stories to you guys. I read it to my daughter almost every night. It definitely contains rhyming and it definitely contains alliteration. I'm going to point out a few of those things on a couple pages and then I'm going to keep reading. And just so while you guys are following along, you can pause and point out where the rhyming is and you can pause and point out where the alliteration is because it's all over this book. I'm just going to point them out in the first couple pages and then let you guys have fun with it. So it's called The Pout Pout Fish. And right in the title, we have alliteration. Pout Pout. They're using that letter P, the P sound, to create alliteration. Deep in the water where the fish hang out lives a glum, gloomy swimmer with an ever-present pout. So we heard alliteration again in the third line here. Lives a glum, gloomy swimmer. Glum and gloomy would be an example of alliteration. I'm a pout pout fish with a pout pout face, so I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. Blub blub blub. Along comes a clam with a wide winning grin and a pearl of advice for her pail to take in. Hey, Mr. Fish with your crosstown frown, 
don't you think it's time to turn it upside down? Says the fish to his friend, nice thought, Miss Clam. I hear what you're saying, but it's just the way I am. Just want to point out here that lines two and four in every stanza of this book rhyme. Clam, am. I'm a pout, pout fish. There's that alliteration. With a pout, pout face. So I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. Blub, blub, blub. Along comes a jellyfish. He floats through the ocean, his tentacles all trailing in a gentle locomotion. Hey, Mr. Fish, with your daily scaly scowl. I wish you wouldn't greet us with a grimace and a growl. Says the fish to his friend, Mr. Jelly, I agree. I'd like to be more friendly, but it isn't up to me. I'm a pout, pout fish with a pout, pout face. So I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. Blub, blub, blub. Along comes a squid, quite a slender, squiggly slight. She is squirmy, she is squelchy, she is slightly impolite. I'm going to pause here because that was a great example of alliteration again. Along comes a squid, quite a slender, squiggly sight. She is squirmy, she is squelchy, she is slightly impolite. Hey, Mr. Fish, you kaleidoscope of mope, how about a smile, a little joy, a little hope? Says the fish to his friend, Mrs. Squid, I would try, but I haven't any choice. Take a look and you'll see why. I'm a pout, pout fish with a pout, pout face, so I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. Blub, blub, blub. Along comes an octopus with eight great arms, covered on the underside with tiny sucker charms. Hey, Mr. Fish, let me tell it to you straight. Your hulky, bulky sulking is an unattractive trait. Says the fish to his friend, Mr. Eight, my chum, with a mouth like mine, I am destined to be glum. I'm a pout, pout fish with a pout, pout face, so I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. Blub, blub, blub. Now along comes a fish in a silent silver shimmer. The gang has never seen before this bright and brilliant swimmer. She approaches Mr. Fish, but instead of saying, hey... She plants a kiss upon his pout, and then she swims away. Mr. Fish is most astounded. Mr. Fish is just aghast. He is stone-faced like a statue. Then he blinks and speaks at last. My friend, says Mr. Fish, I should have known it all along. I thought that I was pouty, but it turns out I was wrong. I'm a kiss-kiss fish with a kiss-kiss face for spreading cheery cheeries all over the place. So I'll smooch, smooch. Smooch, smooch, smooch. I love children's books and I love reading to you guys. So I thought that would be a fun little treat for you to hear a little bit more alliteration. We heard it in pout, pout, and we heard it in blub, blub, blub. It was um, definitely repeated throughout this entire book. So if you guys get the chance to write a poem of your own, which I believe you will by the end of this unit, you're going to have all of these tricks, um, rhyming, alliteration, and then Miss DiCarlo and Miss Radley are going to be teaching personification, onomatopoeia, just a lot of fun poetic devices that you guys can add into your own writing, and I really think that you're going to have a lot of fun with it. I will see you guys soon. Once again, I will po post all of my materials on Seesaw and Dojo. If you have any questions, please just let us know. Take care.